Welcome to this podcast on Metadata Functions, presented by Amadeus Software. My name is Elena Muriel, and I work for Amadeus, who are experts in SaaS and providers of consultancy, support, and training for SaaS software. Please visit our website, www.amadeus.co.uk, to find out more information on this podcast series, as well as other services we provide. In the following presentation, we're going to find out how we can use metadata functions in order to interrogate our metadata server. With the introduction of version 9, SAS Institute moved into the integrated business intelligence arena. This concept revolves around a centralized repository where all aspects of a SAS installation and configuration are recorded. This is referred as metadata and it is surfaced to the applications through the metadata server. The information stored on the metadata server can be very useful for SaaS programmers, and its exploitation can save both time and reduce errors. In particular, there's a series of data step functions that allow programmers to interact with the metadata server. These functions can be used to query existing metadata, update existing information, delete metadata, and create new metadata items. In order to utilize the metadata information, we first must understand how metadata objects are structured. Each object has a unique resource identifier, or URI. This value is made out of a combination of numbers and letters, and it is unique for each object created. Each metadata object has a set of properties or attributes. For example, a column in a SAS dataset can either be character or numeric, and it can also have a length and a label. Each object can also relate to other existing ones through associations. For example, a column is related to the table it belongs to. There are three metadata functions that are particularly interesting. Get an object, normally used to obtain the unique identifier by performing a search in metadata. Get attribute, to retrieve an attribute of an object, and get an association, to retrieve an association type between metadata objects. Before we can use any of these functions, we must launch a SAS session and connect to an active metadata server. The following parameters must be specified in order to access any metadata information. MetaServer, used to specify the name of the active metadata server. MetaPort, to specify the port number where the system is running. Sometimes the same metadata server can be used in a development, test and production environment. MetaUser, to pass the credentials to be used for the connection, this must be a metadata account. MetaPass, the password for that account. MetaProtocol, which is normally said to bridge. A MetaRepository, which is the name of the repository to interrogate. Once the connection is successful, the metadata is visible by issuing the MetaBrowse command. But let's have a look at how this works. The connection to the metadata server is done through an options statement. And here we connect to the current server using the value of localhost, although this will normally be replaced with the full qualifying name of the server. We're going to connect to our production environment, which is running on port 8561. We're using the SAS internal administrator account, and the password has been encrypted using PROC PW encode. Although this is not necessary, it is always recommended to protect SAS passwords. We're using the breach protocol. And finally, we would like to connect to the foundation repository. Notice that no messages are written to the log window when running this code. In order to verify that the connection was successful, we now use the meta browse command. Select OK to connect. If we expand the foundation repository, we can see all of the different object types available. If we select the column type, we can see a list of all of the objects defined as such, with a unique identifier on the right hand side. Expanding the column, we can see that our current environment is going to contain three columns named country. 
Selecting one of them, we can see the properties such as the type of column and the length. Inside each column, we can also see the table association. This contains the name of the dataset linked to that variable. Going through the three columns, we can see that they are actually linked to three datasets. Product, Product Sales 3 and Product Sales 2. Now we're going to extract the names of those three tables using the metadata functions. This can be useful when a column needs to change and we want to know which tables will be affected. Three steps will be required. First, we must find all of the objects that contain the country column name. We will use the metadata get an object function. The first parameter is the one performing the search, in this case searching for country under the column object type. The i will be used to loop through all of the matches and URI to store the unique identifier. The second step will be to find out the unique identifier for the table associated with these columns. This is done through the metadata get an association function. The first parameter will use the URI obtained on the previous step. It will search under the table association, retrieve the first value found and obtain a unique identifier. Finally, the name of the table can be retrieved using the metadata get attribute function. Let's see the result of this example. This data step will create an output table named tables column. Some of the variables used need to be defined and initialized at the beginning of the program. The use of a do until statement allows the code to loop around looking for country columns. The three metadata functions are then used in order to search for any columns with the name country and obtain the unique identifier, find the table association and obtain a new identifier, and use the last identifier to read the name of the table. If the search criteria were successful, then the values are written to the output dataset. When we run the code, we can see that the results contain a table with three records, and the table contains the product sales, product sales 2, and product sales 3 datasets. That concludes this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Amadeus Software podcast. We hope you found it useful. Please make sure to check out the rest of this podcast series via our website. We also welcome any comments or suggestions you may have for future tips. Please feel free to contact us via email at info at amadeus.co.uk, by telephone or visiting our website at www.amadeus.co.uk.